Please welcome member of the Earthshot Prize Council, Her Majesty Queen Rania Al-Abdullah. It's such a pleasure to be here at the Earthshot Prize Innovation Summit with the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly as a backdrop. I want to thank the Prince of Wales for his leadership and vision, which he is always committed to seeing through, much like his late grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, who was a passionate advocate for combating climate change. She set the bar incredibly high with her deep sense of duty and resilience. May she rest in eternal peace. I would also like to thank Michael Bloomberg, who has done so much in the fight against climate change. And as all of us know in this fight, no one can afford to sit on the sidelines. No one can claim that climate change is somebody else's problem or shrug it off for future generations to address. We're all affected by a warming planet. We see that every day. And decisions being made right now will determine our shared tomorrow. So we must choose, and we must act as United Nations ourselves. Our progress depends on collective action, on collective ingenuity. If we stick together, we can make fixing the climate the greatest project and greatest achievement of our lifetimes. We have the science, we have the solutions. Now all the world needs is political will. Together, we can create a future where rampant carbon is removed from the atmosphere, where green buildings and green business transform the livability of communities, where easy access to renewable, renewable energy enables greater equity, where sustainable agriculture feeds a growing global population. The needs are urgent, and the costs of inaction are worse than any nightmare. But let us not be driven by, let us be driven by hope, not fear by optimism, not despair. Because hope is not passive. Hope is the ultimate source of renewable energy, pushing us forward every day to try and try again. Achieving carbon neutrality can be a journey of innovation fueled by a spirit of possibility driven by faith in ourselves. You'll see what I mean when you meet the 2021 finalists for the Fix Our Climate Earthshot Prize. These inspiring climate champions are developing bold solutions, scalable solutions, that will make real progress in the fight against carbon in our atmosphere. They are pushing us forward towards a future where everyone can thrive. Now let's take a look at one of the talented 2021 finalists who is working to fix our climate. Thank you. Almost everything we do has a carbon footprint. That carbon dioxide is already making our planet warmer, threatening all life on Earth. We need as many exceptional solutions as possible right now to fix our climate. In Germany, innovators are focusing on hydrogen as an alternative to fossil fuels. Enapta provides low-cost, high-quality hydrogen in a small electrolyzer which can make a single home energy independent. In Bangladesh, SolShare is enabling communities to produce and share solar power by interconnecting households. Now, neighbors can buy and sell energy with each other in tiny, affordable amounts. An innovative scheme in Nigeria called Ready allows people to rent cheap, powerful solar-charged batteries, providing clean, portable and reliable energy to homes and businesses and reducing dependence on dirty diesel generators. Tech solutions like these, along with those provided by nature, are essential in humanity's challenge to stabilise our climate. Please welcome co-founder of Anapter and winner of the Earthshot Prize, Vitea Cohen.
We're going back to middle school. It's a chemistry class. Do you remember this? We split water by passing current through it. Well, what if I told you that the experiment we witnessed then is a key to tackling climate change? Yes, at 14 years old, we already knew. And today, we have the means to make green hydrogen a fuel source of the future. This experiment is called water electrolysis. And the device creating this experiment at a commercial scale is called an electrolyzer. And powered by green electricity, an electrolyzer produces green hydrogen by splitting water, H2O, into H and O. Green hydrogen is a carbon-free fuel that can replace fossil fuels. So why do we need green hydrogen? It's because when we look at our world's energy consumption today, only 20% is met in the form of electricity. And this means that the remaining 80% of our world's energy use is coming from molecules. And while the world is making rapid progress in greening our electricity, we need to look towards our molecules as well. Think about your industry, heating and cooling and transport sectors. They are all powered by molecules. And yes, this means largely by fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. And we won't be able to electrify all of our sectors. And here's why. Let's take an example from the industrial sector. To make steel the old way, we first mine iron ore, then burn coal to remove oxygen from the iron mix. Electrons can't do that. But what they can do is power the device producing green hydrogen. And this clean molecule will create the reaction that gets rid of the oxygen. And by changing the process, we can reduce our CO2 emissions by up to 95% for this process. And today, major European steel manufacturers are already building green hydrogen-based steel production processes. The world is turning to green hydrogen because it is effectively coupling those hard-to-decarbonize sectors with green electricity. Green hydrogen is an extremely versatile energy carrier that can be used in a wide range of applications, and we're seeing this firsthand with our customers. Some are building hydrogen planes that fly emission-free, and they're producing their green hydrogen on-site at the airport. Others are turning green hydrogen into hydrogen-derived fuels, like green ammonia or green methanol, which can be used to power global shipping. And some are storing green hydrogen across seasons and powering remote communities, like this one in Malaysia. So you might be wondering, well, why aren't we using green hydrogen everywhere already? And so previously, the reason was the cost of green electricity. But that's no longer the bottleneck. So what is the challenge? It's the speed, scale, and cost of making these green hydrogen generators. Well, that's exactly what we are working on. Because to make green hydrogen the fuel source of the future, it needs to be cheaper than fossil fuels. And that means electrolyzers are going to need to be really, really cheap. We started an after in 2017 with this one goal in mind and urgency in our hearts. And so we chose a means that is a bit different from how others in the industry proceed. We turned to economic history and looked for solutions that scaled fast and reduced costs significantly. And the answer was clear. If you want to take a solution around the globe as quickly as possible, you need to make it a standardized, mass-produced commodity, a product that is easy to make and quick to build, and cheap as well. And so, while some believe electrolyzers need to be large machines, we believe the electrolyzer should be a standardized, mass-producible product that can make green hydrogen anywhere for anyone. So to better understand our approach, let me draw an analogy. Up until the 80s, mainframe computers were the future of computing. But they took up a whole room, they were quite complex equipments, and they were designed for businesses only. Then came the PC. And at first, people laughed and wondered, hmm, why would we ever need such a tiny computer? But ultimately, 
It disrupted the industry. And today, data centers, they're made of blade servers, which is PC technology, not mainframes. Why? Because the PC became a standardized, mass-produced commodity, one that was easy to make, cheap to build, and that could be deployed in any kinds of environment. Now, it's time to do this with green hydrogen. At the heart of our electrolyzer is an electrolysis core, creating green hydrogen. And it is the foundation for all of our systems. And we're taking these core stacks and other components of our electrolyzers into mass production. And by avoiding the use of expensive materials in our designs, we're slashing costs significantly. The next step is going into mass production. But before that, let me show you how others are building larger machines and how we are building compact ones that can be combined to achieving any hydrogen quantities needed. And this is the next step. Going into mass production and starting with the first electrolyzers being produced in early 2023 in our and after campus in Germany. And it'll be fully powered by renewable electricity, locally produced. And this is where we'll be tackling speed, scale, and cost. Because by focusing on one single core size system, we can leverage massive economies of scale and drop down the price of green hydrogen. Because this is what it is all about making green hydrogen cheaper than fossil fuels. We have the means to make green hydrogen the fuel source of the future. It's time to listen to our 14-year-old selves and the 14-year-olds of today. Our generation has a unique opportunity. It's time for the next industrial revolution. We can turn our world's energy supply into a sustainable one, one made possible by a lot of green electricity and a wave of green hydrogen molecules. This is how we end the fossil fuel era. Thank you.